it's impossible at this point for the Democrats to separate from whatever the remnants of the Capitol Hill riot, storming, house party, whatever you want to call it at this point. It is anything but an insurrection. But guess what? They aren't going to let that lie because there was a big hearing in the Senate early, earlier this week about the response or the lack thereof. And some of the takeaways from that are neatly put together by the Hill. And we know that they aren't necessarily known for the best and brightest reporting. So I'll show you what they came up with. And then I'll provide you with some of my own sources. Stark testimony from the head of DC's National Guard on Wednesday raised new questions about the Pentagon's response as insurrectionists were attacking the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. Won't somebody please think of the congressmen and women? Or congresspeople. Sorry, sorry, I wouldn't want to be in breach of the 117th Congress's non-gendered language. Here are five takeaways. Well... Timeline delays came into focus. Yes, I'm sure they did. One of the biggest revelations from D.C.'s National Guard commanding Major General William Walker's testimony was exactly how long he said it took for him to get approval to deploy January 6th after receiving a frantic call from then Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund asking for help. Walker said the approval at 5.08 p.m., three hours and 19 minutes after Sund's first call to him, contradicting Pentagon officials who have been insisting they acted as fast as they could. Okay, well, we had the permits. Everybody had known that there was going to be a massive gathering there. And why weren't all of the Capitol Hill police officers that were available on duty for that day? Or if that wasn't enough of a force, even though the Capitol Hill Police Department is the largest police department in the nation now if they needed help from like say oh i don't know the national guard something that uh, major general walker would have an intimate knowledge of well okay in order to enact that you think that that would lie at the feet of the president right well trump asked for ten thousand additional soldiers to be brought in national guardsmen but those calls were ignored yes trump did call for ten thousand national guards on National Guard troops on January 6th in some of his first public remarks since losing the November election. Former President Donald Trump told Fox News that he warned the Pentagon days before that it was not ready for the crowd of Trump backers who would converge on Washington January 6th and recommended calling up 10,000 National Guard troops. Trump said he told his top person at the Pentagon, which at the time was Acting Defense Secretary Chris Miller, that the crowd is going to be massive on the fact that everybody I'd see would say, oh, we're going to be at the rally. We're going to be at the rally. That matches what Miller told reporter and former CIA lawyer Adam Cyr Cyril Sky, sure, who wrote a fly on the wall account of Miller's final week in the Pentagon for Vanity Fair. You're going to need about 10,000 people. No, I'm not talking bullshit. He said that. Miller said or told Cyril <laughs> Sky, sure, of his conversation with Trump. You're going to need 10,000. That's what he said. I swear to God. So. Okay, why did that fall on deaf, e deaf ears? Well, because Nancy Pelosi didn't want it to happen. Oh, God, that sucks. Pelosi's fault. Speaker Pelosi told Sergeant at Arms to deny National Guard at Capitol due to optics. Left building unprotected, then lied about it. Yep. Why she hasn't been called on to testify under oath is beyond everybody. Comprehension, to be completely honest not that she could remember something so far back as january 6th through the days leading up to that but you should subpoena her phone records to see who she called on that day or who she called off on that day we could skim through all of the bartenders and the local liquor stores but who she called and who the directions were given to questions that will continue to go unanswered meanwhile they'll be able to trumpet the insurrection at the capitol hill from here until eternity because god damn it 9 11 is turning 20 this year and they're gonna need a new scapegoat for anything that's gone wrong and it's perfect to pin on orange man because it happened under his watch and it was all of his evil trump supporters and like five to seven or 25 people died that day even though the evidence supporting that claim keeps dwindling a day after day after day the only person who has been confirmed to actually have died directly from anything that 
was sustained on that day was Ashley Babbitt getting shot in the neck by a Capitol Hill police officer. But back to this steaming pile of shit. National Guard was hamstrung ahead of the attack. Ah, uh, yes, it was. Specifically, Walker pointed to an unusual January 5th memo from McCarthy restricting his ability to deploy a so-called quick reaction force without McCarthy's approval. Well, the National Guard answers directly to the commander-in-chief, so if he calls for it, and then the acting secretary of defense is supposed to relay that message to the National Guard... Why is Kevin McCarthy sticking his beak into this? Hmm, interesting. Had it not been for this restriction, Walker said he would have sent them there immediately as soon as I hung up. Uh, no, because he would have been getting a phone call from Nancy Pelosi telling you to just stop because everybody has a two-drink minimum to hit. Fucking old alcoholic. Oh, but then we glance into the fact that Nancy Pelosi thought that it would have been bad optics because summer protests loomed large, Walker told the committees. It was never really explained to me why the restrictions were placed on him. Yeah, and we'll never get the answer to that. But he drew a stark contrast between January 6th and the response to the racial justice protests. Thank you, Hill. This is the only time I bring them up because they are a laughable organization, which is no better than CNN. Let me rephrase this. Response to racial riots over the summer. Asked by Homeland Security Committee Chairman Gary Peters, a Democrat from Michigan who should know all about burnt-out buildings, whether he got immediate approval from McCarthy and Miller. The only one he has to answer to is Miller, by the way. McCarthy does nothing. He was minority leader at the time. Still is. So why does his input matter at all? Exactly. The only one that he answers to, or the only one that the House has to answer to, is that med school cadaver who bangs the gavel in the House of Con Representatives. So instead of getting on the horn and actually getting the people that they needed for this hearing, they would just lament the fact that they didn't get anything from Chris Miller. I'm disappointed we don't have someone from the Department of Defense who actually was there at the time. I think you're being put in a tough position, Mr. Saleses. Sure, Portman said. Blunt, the ranking member of the Rules Committee, said senators certainly have questions for Miller and McCarthy, but said he was unsure what format they will take, or that will take. See why I didn't even bother reporting on this at the time? Because nobody was there who had any information, and the people who were there would not provide any of the information. And the FBI's top brass, just in case you needed somebody to go ahead and obfuscate the facts a little bit further bring in the federal bureau of investigations you know the guys who open investigations and never close them or at least to a satisfactory level they certainly don't they're probably still out there trying to piece jfk's skull back together in dallas but all of this was just for a backdrop as well because march 4th came and went and it was being trumpeted because the history of Marth march 4th is it was the original inauguration date for presidents there was a much longer period where you know elections got figured out if there were any irregularities that rise you would just go ahead and iron everything out so then by march 4th everything should be all said and done but then it got moved up because oh why wait and figure everything out fuck it ain't nobody got time for that but why was there any coverage or any kind of alert being put out on March 4th. Why is this back in the news? Aha, because Q, QAnon, you know, that thing where they think stuff. I don't even know. Like, you guys know I'm not the biggest Q aficionado. I know that they don't like pedophiles. I know that they had some really goofy leadership, or at least the guys who would trumpet it are the touch off, if I may be so bold. But as far as I can tell, nobody was going down to the Capitol on the 4th to cause any riot. And like it says here from Insider, Trump's fake inauguration on March 4th was QAnon's latest vision that flopped. Yes, because it wasn't a thing. This is an old picture, okay? A QAnon sign outside the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. That was the last time Q meant anything to anybody because it just all kind of blew up in everybody's face there's nothing to it okay and the only people who keep dragging it up once again is insider is the hill is cnn is mainstream media it's just a way to co-op the ideas of a crazy conspiracy theory throw it on everybody over on the right and think that you know the right conservatives 
libertarians. It's just a monolith because that's the way that the left is. Everybody is exactly one way over there. So therefore, everybody on the other side is exactly the same way. That is not the case. So quit trying to smear people. I know they aren't going to listen to me and they're going to continue with the tactics. You guys already know this, but this is the type of shit that they do. And I try to make you guys a little bit more aware of the ideas that the media peddle because as much as I think that Andrew Cuomo is a corrupt sack of shit that should be impeached, recalled, I don't know, rid out of town on a rail, and Gavin Newsom as well, normies out there don't think about stuff that much, okay? They aren't as involved. They get fed the pablum like this. They take the ideas of the headline that, don't be disappointed, one, subs one subscriber wrote on a popular Q QAnon Telegram channel late Thursday. Okay, how many people know what QAnon is? Okay, very few people. How many people have heard of QAnon? More people, but still a vast minority of people. And Telegram, I have I know of it. I'm involved in this world. I've never used it. So just already, you have such a high barrier of entry to actually understand what you guys are reading within the first few words. The race is not run yet, and I have reason to believe March 20th is also possible. Who is saying this? Where are they saying this? What traction did this site have? These are questions that should be answered instead of just posting this as 100% fact. Like Fox News, OAN, and Newsmax are just running this type of coverage 24-7. Hence why they want to get it banned, because that's what the Democrats think? I, I don't understand this. Another posted a similar a similarly optimistic message. We still have 16 days, they wrote. Lots can happen between now and then. Okay, so two assholes think things. Cool. That also describes the dipshit handoff in the middle of the night in CNN when Chris Cuomo hands off to Don Lemon. With the passing of March 4th, a highly anticipated date for followers of QAnon. Really? Some remain characteristically delusional. See, they don't give them any quarter whatsoever. They spent Friday morning urging other followers to look forward and keep the faith. No. No, they didn't. A series of no-shows. How about you tried to hype everything up and then it ended up not happening? You guys don't have the power that you think you do with the other side. It's base. You can't just whip people up into a frenzy by just saying, Oh, guess what? Something's going to happen on the 4th. Oh, you guys better not show up and cause a big ru ruckus because then we'd have to cover it. Oh, that'd be terrible. They go into a, a fucking long-winded series and it's like, we'll go, oh, Nobody showed up. That means that they're just going to push it off to, Jan or to March 20th. And then after that, what? It's going to be, okay, wait a couple of weeks for April Fool's Day and all of a sudden Donald Trump will be in the Oval Office because uh, Joe Biden's been a goof the entire time? Like, is that what they're going to pretend that conspiracy theorists are pushing? Like, they don't offer any proof of these allegations except for two redacted Telegram posts. What are you waiting for now? Is Biden going to be arrested later today? Why hasn't anything happened? That, that's their proof. They don't offer anything else. And then they just show the Capitol being locked up tighter than a nun's box. Like, you guys are doing terrible journalism. Like, this almost makes that book review from The Atlantic for Jordan Peterson's Beyond Order look readable or coherent. One thing I do agree with, others are simply set on a resounding victory for Trump in 2024. Oh, you guys would really hate that now, wouldn't you? Oh, Trump definitely don't run in 2024. We would want to have to cover that for another three, well, for four years right now and then four years after that. No, please, Trump, don't do that because our ratings definitely aren't in the shitter right now. We definitely don't need that uh, mythical Trump bump. No, please don't. The cycle continues. I concur. Now I want to glance back up at this picture here. Okay, so March 4th was never going to happen. Stop trying to make it happen. March 20th is going to be exactly the same, and I'm sure that you guys are probably just going to shift a couple of words in here in order to make that article once again work, and it's like, whoa, I don't know what happened. Nobody showed up. I guess Q's just another bust. But instead, they can continue to fortify the capitol building like it's a maximum security prison oh to keep all the nuts in <laughs> no but they keep citing they being congress that there are continuous security threats like oh march 4th is going to be so terrible oh joe biden's inauguration date oh that was going to be terrible the president's day something 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 they'll figure out something who knows they'll probably slander christians and catholics who think that jesus christ will be coming back easter sunday and you need to prepare for the reckoning Hence why they're asking for an additional two months of support from the National Guard. Because must security? I, they don't have any substantiated claims on this. Pentagon confirms request for extension of National Guard mission at the Capitol. 
U.S. Capitol Police have requested an extension of the National Guard mission to provide heavily armed protection of Congress and the Capitol grounds, the Defense Department confirmed Thursday. We have indeed received a request from the Department of Defense is currently considering the request, a defense official told the Washington Examiner without providing details about the number of requested citizen soldiers and the length of time amid reports that the mission will stretch well into the spring months or through the end of the year if you look at some different reports. Presently, 5,200 National Guard members patrol a vast barbed wire-topped perimeter fence around the U.S. Capitol in nearby federal buildings. Lawmakers and governors have protested the need of their presence, and federal agencies have declined to disclose specific details about threats. Troops have been in Washington, D.C., away from their family their day jobs and families since January 6th Capitol riots carried out by Trump supporters. That's becoming a little less credible day after day. Law enforcement and National Guard officials say there has been credible intelligence chatter about attempts to sack or blow up the legislative hall, including on Thursday, which guess what? Amounted to fuck all, which is something that it has in common with the people that they are there to protect. Amounting to fuck all. But once again, yeah, what do they cite? Chatter. Chatter. That's supposed to make you scared, okay? Not knowing where this chatter comes from. And who's their source? AOC? What, did she see another ghost on the wall? Just like the quarantines that are going on right now, well, quarantines, lockdowns, all of those draconian measures, I fully anticipate the National Guard to be there through probably the summer, if not into the fall. Maybe they'll get called back for the winter months because they need time to install a couple of heaters in those parking garages. I joke, but that makes me legitimately furious that Congress did that to those good men and women. There's a lot of questions about why the Capitol is still being fortified as if those were people worth such vigorous defense. It's questions we have that will never properly get answered, at least not for the next four years or two. Depends on how the next set of elections go. So yeah, to recap that, Senate held some meaningless hearings. They didn't invite the right people. They didn't ask the right questions. Pelosi denied the troops that Trump asked for. And the media likes to run with Q because they're all staffed by a bunch of R's. Helmet bedecked R's. With that said, I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.